الحمد للہ رب العالمین وصلی اللہ وسلم علی نبی محمد و علی و صحبہ وسلم اما بعد ایو الحبت فی اللہ due to the time that we live in a time of great strife and fitna and trials and tribulations and unfortunately one of the greatest trials that we experience is the trial and test of kathra the tibdi' wa takfir wa tafsiq we live in a time when many people easily declare others to be innovators and easily declare other people's to be disbelievers and easily declare their brothers and sisters to be wicked sinners and with regards to how we deal with this fitna the ulama in the past have written about this and in general the advice of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he said فَمَنْ يَعِيشْ مِنْكُمْ بَعْدِي فَسَيَّرَا اخْتِلَافٍ كَثِيرًا that whoever lives after me will see many differences فَعَلَيْكَمْ بِسُنَّةِ وَسُنَّةُ خُلَفَى رَاشِدِينَ مَحْدِينَ so it's upon you my sunnah and the sunnah of the rightly guided khalifat so this lets us know that we have a minhaj, we have a methodology the treaties I want us to try to benefit from a habitifillah is a treaties entitled Al-Farq Bayna Nusiha Wa Ta'yir The difference between advising and condemning Lil Imam Al-Hafid Zain al-Din Ibn Rajib Al-Hanbali Rahmatullah Alayhi Rahmat Al-Wasiya In Imam Ibn Rajab, he died 751 Hijri. And I don't want to prolong the introduction of the Imam, although he has a haq. But I think what is more relevant for us, and likewise supplicating to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to have mercy upon him and bless him with genital for dose and forgiveness and the fact that we're spreading his knowledge and that those brothers and sisters who have put forth the efforts to translate these beneficial treatises for us treatises of the great imams of Ahlul Sunnah then this is doing a khidma a service to the sunnah of the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Ibn Rajib as we said, he died, or he was born in Baghdad in the year 736 Hijri, according to the most correct opinion found in the discussions presented by those who recorded his biography. He spent his early years uh, seeking knowledge, and the major scholars of his time, they testified to his greatness even in his youth and gave him the approval to teach and he was he's known as half of the Rajab. some of the main books important books that we that Imam Ibn Rajab left behind Jamil Ulum Wal Hikam and this is one of the most famous books of his and it is uh, an explanation of Imam Anoui's uh, uh, Armaeen Anoui and it is actually with 10 other ahadith and so it's an explanation of 50 ahadith of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and it is full of ilm and fiqh and benefit he also left behind Dalail Tabaqat al-Hanabila which is a book uh, which is a co compilation of the scholars of the Hanbali Madhab also Lata'if al-Ma'arif this is a book uh, on the duties one is required to do during the times of uh, you know Ramadan and th during the Eids and so forth 
Uh, and then the book that we have, that we're going to go over, which is Al-Farq Bayna Al-Nasiha Wa Ta'ir. And likewise, he has ahadith, uh, explanations of ahadith, and, and a lot of his rasail are compiled in a book in, in Arabic, if you have the Arabic language and you have the chance to get the book, because I think it's somewhat rare. And it, it's about, um, about six volumes, and it's a series of his rasail and treatises and and so forth. And another one of his very important books, which some of the ulama, alhamdulillah, some of us have had the chance to sit in some of the explanations with some of the ulama, like Sheikh Saleh al-Sahimi, Allah Ta'ala, he explained this in one of the Dorat, which is a famous book titled Fadl al-Ilm as-Salaf ala ilma khalaf, uh, or ala khalaf, khalaf. And it's a, a great uh, treaties discussing the virtues of knowledge and its types and its etiquettes, the etiquettes of seeking knowledge and the importance of the knowledge of the Salaf because perhaps at the time of Ibn Rajab that some of the people believed that the knowledge of the Salaf, the Salaf weren't as knowledgeable and didn't have the same fiqh that later generations had as far as no knowing the sciences and so forth. So this was a refutation of that concept letting us know that the best fiqh of the deen comes with the salaf. And the Prophet ﷺ said, uh, The best people is my generation, then those who follow them, then those who follow them. Letting us know that the salaf of this ummah, the first three generations, the sahaba, the tabi'in, that those are the best uh, of the ummah of Muhammad ﷺ in general. And their knowledge is la shak, the most purest, the, the purest form and the most orthodox uh, ilm that we can get and, and the best understanding in menhaj. The Shaykh began by saying, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. All praises for Allah, Lord of the universe, and may his peace and blessings be upon the foremost of those who fear Allah and the seal of the prophets, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, as well as his family, his companions, and all those who follow them in righteousness until the day of recompense. These are some brief yet comprehensive words concerning the difference between advising and condemning. For indeed they are counterparts in the sense that they both consist of mentioning something about a people that they hate to have mentioned. Then he said, however, the distinction between the two is something that is not understood by many people. Thus, Allah is the one who grants correctness. So it's imperative of Habitat Allah as Imam uh, uh, Ibn Rajab, he explained or he laid out what his treatise is going to be about and letting us know that there is a distinction between advising and condemning. And this is what many, many of the people do not understand. And why it's very important for us to understand is because, as is always the case, is so many people are confused about when there are refutations between Ahl Sunnah or when there's a refutation uh, of someone from Ahl Bid'ah. So people have to have some idea and concept to know that these are from the religion of Islam that the Sahaba refuted one another with respect and maintaining the honor and position of one another and the rank of one another. The Prophet ﷺ reprimanded his Sahaba if they had made a mistake or they needed correcting in something. And so it's imperative for us to understand that this is first and foremost concepts, these are concepts from the religion, refutations. Number two, it's also important for us to understand that every refutation does not mean you are belittling someone or negating their knowledge or negating any khair that they have. But rather, perhaps someone from Ahl Sunnah, sometimes an alim from Ahl Sunnah, falls into a mistake 
that goes against the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam or from an issue of ijtihad that they make uh, uh, some sort of juristic uh, reasoning to try to attain the truth but they are not blessed with gaining the truth in that particular issue. Well, if they're a person who's ahlan for ijtihad, they're a person of knowledge and who has understanding, but then they make this mistake, they will be rewarded by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala still. They'll receive one reward. But if they get an issue correct, this is the case for ahl al then they will receive two rewards. So the person, he, he made a mistake in his, his fatwa, his fatwa, but he still is ma'jur, he still is correct if he's from Ahl Sunnah and he made an honest mistake striving to attain the truth and it wasn't based on his desires and so forth. So it's important to know that that mistake must not be followed. And that mistake also is blameworthy in that you, you cannot follow it and it should be made clear to the people by and at the same time maintaining the honor of the Imam or the individual from Ahl Sunnah who made this mistakes and likewise refuting Ahl Bidah. But Ahl Bidah don't have the same status. For example, someone whose foundation in the religion, their minhaj, their methodology for understanding Islam is different than the methodology of Ahl Sunnah. Then this person you don't have the same respect for in your reputation, but you still must refute them based upon knowledge. You must refute them based upon knowledge and not desires and not lying and with honesty. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil.